Hey guys, and welcome to Top Channel 101. So here is a snippet of uh, a new lecture that I've added to the Master Geometry Nodes course. If you're interested in it, uh, there's a discounted link in the description. Or if you just want to check out just this lecture, you can get it on my Patreon page. You can also get the project files there. But uh, the course discount link will get you everything, including other my other lectures and uh, all the project files there. And uh, you can also ask questions there. Okay, thank you. Let's jump right into it. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to create something like this, a procedurally weaved cloth animation, just like this. You can texture it. You can even see we have some physics simulation on top of it. So let's jump right into it. Uh, we're going to start by creating a cloth simulation. Uh, there is no need to reinvent the wheel. We can just use the cloth simulation that comes with Blender. So I'm just going to use Shift-A, add a plane. And I'm just going to scale it a bit and use Control a to apply the scale. And... I'll go in and subdivide it a few times, not too much, uh, just a few times, maybe like four times. And uh, on top of that, add a subdivision surface modifier. Turn it to simple and turn off optimum display. And uh, if you go to overlays and turn on wireframe, we can see the subdivisions we have added. We can turn off this subdivision for a second and go into edit mode, select the corner vertices, just like that, and then go to the data object properties and create a new vertex group, assign the selected vertices into that vertex group and now we can go into the physics tab and add a cloth simulation system now if i hit play this just falls down we're going to use these grouped vertices as our pinned vertices so let's scroll down to the shape and add our group as the pin group now if i play back uh, this falls down but it doesn't look interesting so i'm just going to bring it up a bit and uh, let me subdivide it one more time play back Okay, and uh, in the shape, I can just reduce the, the shrinking and uh, this will make the cloth larger. But I want the cloth to be more dynamic than this. So I can add a force, shift A, field force, turbulence, and just add it here. Let me give it a strength of, let's say, a thousand. Maybe that's too much. Let's say 100, something like that. And uh, I can change the size. Uh, maybe that's too much. Let's say five. Yeah, so, so that is a bit wavy like that. I want the turbulence to be continuous. So what I'm going to do is animate this force uh, by just moving it from left to right. So I'm just going to add some keyframes where it's moving from left to right. And uh, that will make the turbulence uh, more turbulent. Yeah, so something like that. And uh, we can... Turn on the subdivision surface. This will give the cloth more resolution. But I don't want this kind of uh, stretching in the beginning. And uh, that's usually because we have added this. We have changed the size of the, the cloth by adding a shrinking value. So what I'm going to do is reduce the subdivisions to maybe one and uh, simulate to a few frames until that stretching is no longer there. And then I can apply the subdivisions and then the close simulation so that we have something like that. We just wanted to have a rest position. So I can go to the physics tab, cloth and uh, add a new cloth system, playback. Uh, it has the turbulence and everything we need, except we need to bring back the pin group. So I'll just add that back again. And uh, it's pinned and uh, it's also yeah, we're also getting some turbulence. This is going to make it so that when we have the animation, how the cloth is moving, uh, it, it just adds some nice detail and wrinkles to the simulation, which, which looks good. So this is where we are. At this stage, I can go to the cloth simulation and uh, bake the simulation. So I can go under Cache and hit Bake to bake my simulation. Now we can set up Geometry Node. So I'll go to the Geometry Nodes tab and set up a new Geometry Node system. To make our threads, we need each individual, these edge loops to be separated. So I want edge loops running in the X direction and I want edge loops running in the Y directions like that. Now, the easiest way to separate this is by using the UV map. I'm going to change my spreadsheet to a UV editor so that I can take a look at these UVs. And uh, uh, since this is a grid, we get a nice UV grid like this. And uh, what we're going to do is use this UV map to isolate the edges or the loops running vertically and the loops running horizontally. And the way we do that, uh, let's go back to the previous screen. I remember this looks like this. We're going to use the UV map we have. So I'm going to use an attribute, a named attribute. I bring in the UV map. And uh, if I take a look at that, and uh, you can see we have uh, this. If I separate using the X 
separate x y you can see we have a gradient running on the x and we have a gradient running on the y let me turn on my wireframe if we go to the overlays and turn on attribute text now we are looking at a lot of points but uh yeah you can see that the gradient is mapping from zero to a value of one here now we have a lot of subdivision so we can't really see what's going on so what i'm going to do is just add a decimate modifier above the geometry nodes and I just use the unsubdivide and let's subdiv unsubdivide a few times so that we don't have that many and uh, we can come back here take a look at this and now we can see how this is mapped so from a value of zero to a value of one so all the loops running on the y are mapped so you can see this is zero 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 and then 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.2 so this is what we have now what I want to do is create a selection where this is zero and this is one and this is zero and this is one this is zero and this is one and uh, the easiest way to do that is by just checking where, whether the value is an even or an odd number now our range is still in decimals so we need to map this range of zero to one to integers where we have zero one two three four five six seven eight uh, that way we can change whether these are odd numbers or even numbers and uh, we can even try that right now by using a map range we know that we have around one two three four five six seven eight nine vertices nine vertices so i'll map from zero zero to one which is our gradient uh, to a value of zero to nine just like that now we just need to drop these decimals so what i'm going to do is just use a math node and try different operations like round uh, to see if we get the correct uh, value so we have zero one two three uh, it seems that uh, we are missing a four for some reason and then five six seven eight i think that's a result of the type of interpolation that is being used uh, i couldn't find a workaround to get all the numbers but uh, if you change the the operation from round to floor uh, then we'll be missing an eight instead of a four which is not the best solution but at least the the values we are missing are at the end of uh, the count instead of the middle which which is much easier to fix Okay, so when I was recording the lecture, I couldn't find a good solution for the missing numbers, but uh, here's what you can do to fix it. So I'm using a math node with the truncate uh, rounding option uh, so that we can drop the decimals. And uh, if we just use a map of, if we are mapping from zero to nine, you can see that we are missing, we are always missing at least a value. We're missing eight here. So what you can do is just hold down shift and just reduce the values down quite a bit so you can see when i re reduce this now we are mapping from zero to eight so if the last if you're mapping to a decimal then then i guess this node will be able to round off to the nearest number and uh, then you won't be able to miss this now we can easily check for odd numbers by just using another math node here and changing changing it to truncated modular and uh, let's just check for the modular of two this is basically just checking whether if a value is divided by two you get a remainder or not if we land on an even number we'll get a zero if we land on an odd number because any odd number divided by two you will always get a remainder uh we get a one so we end up with this pattern of zero one zero one uh, which is exactly what we want now we can come in here and use a delete node delete geometry and just delete all the points that are odd just like that now we have a line like that actually we can even just use the separate geometry here and use this as our selection and it will give us this it will just separate the different lines depending on whether it's an even line or an odd line now if we join these back we get all the lines and uh, let me just bring back the original and just use a set position set position uh, just for reference uh, you can see that we get all the lines uh, except for the last one here because of the type of interpolation we seem to be having where we are missing an eight we still end up with this edge connected if you want to delete those those faces uh, let's just find out the face that is connected to this so this piece here what we can do is use the edge neighbor node this is just going to check the number of faces connected to an edge and now we can easily see that this edge is connected to this face and this face but the outside edges are connected only to one face so if we check for with the compare node and we see if we have anything greater than 
uh, let's use an integer if the first count is equal to one you can see we get a true 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 but the middle edges are going to be one 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 we can delete those edges i should be delete edge and now you can see we have our edges like that so instead of this actually we need the opposite of this so i'm going to use boolean math change this to not uh, that way we get the edges and now this is what you connect here so we have that so we had a grid of that says running on the y like that and uh, we separated them to get this so these are going to be our threads but we also need the ones that go in this direction and that should be very easy all we need is the same setup let me just organize everything so i'm going to just duplicate this up here and uh, the only difference is instead of using the y value we can just use the x value and we get the ones running on the x the good thing about this is that it's procedural so if i bring if i remove the decimal modifier let me first turn off the geometry nodes and turn off decimate this is the original mesh so if we take a look at this without the decimal modifier you see we run into an issue and the reason why we are running into an issue is because of this number remember before the decimate we had about nine edge loops running in each direction so we had a one two three four five six seven eight nine and uh, that's what we added in here now if we remove this this count doubles basically increases and uh, now this setup fails to work because uh this number is no longer correct now we need to find a way to get the correct amount of vertices running in each direction and the best way to do that is by using math so so if we take a look at this mesh in its original form uh, and uh, just look at the index you can see we have vertices running this side and we have our uh, vertices running uh the other sides so whenever you have a grid like this to get in total number of points in this grid what you always do is multiply the number of vertices in one row by the other row so if we have nine here and nine here we multiply nine by nine and that will give us the total of vertices in this grid which is basically nine squared but we can also do the opposite if we have the total number of points in this grid you can find the number of points of vertices in one axis by using the square root so let's do that so to get the total number of points we can use the domain size and i just plug this in and that will give us the total count which is 1084 now if we use a math node and change this to square root we get the total vertices running in each direction so let's bring back the decimate and see if we'll get a nine here you can see we get the total number we had before so we can turn this into a dynamic value that way we don't have to do the calculation manually so we can just bring this in and uh, connect this here and if we now look at this setup we always get the right number so if i turn off the decimate you can see we get all the lines running on the x and uh, we can also do this here and just use the same so this here and we should get the lines going on running on the x and the lines running on the y just like that but it's not good practice to have duplicated uh, nodes like this when you can use group node i'm just going to delete this setup uh, take a look at this and i know the only thing uh, let me first go back a second uh, i still need this uh, we don't need to duplicate this when we can use group nodes so if i take a look at this uh, that's working the only thing that changes is this x and y option so i can just convert this into a group node using ctrl g the only input we need is the geometry actually this doesn't need to be there uh, so i'm going to rem also remove it here so just like that uh, the only thing we need to do is decide which axis we want to use uh, so i can use a switch node a switch node here change this to float we either want to use an x or y so this can go it can be the new value and uh, the switch node this option here can be an input that way if i want to use x i can just click the switch node and uh, i should be able to see uh, let's see what's going on 
here. Let's make sure that we are outputting the correct stuff. So we have this, this, make sure that I'm not bypassing anything. Ah, this wasn't connected. So it has to be connected. So yeah, if I want to switch to the X, I can just click switch and I get something like this. Now I'm just going to duplicate this and uh, so that this was the Y and use a join geometry. So we have a grid like this and I remember this is all procedure. So if I added a subdivision surface above this, I change this to simple and subdivide one more time. You can see I can, we can get more, more subdivisions just like that. It's, it's still animated like a cloth and everything. So I don't want to give away too much, but uh, that's the foundation of this effect. We just layer a few other things on top of it to turn it into a weaving animation. Yeah, if you take the course, join us in the discussion so that ask questions and have fun. And if you just want only this project, you can also check out my Patreon. Uh, you can access the full lecture and the project itself. Thank you.